Hi guys and welcome to TechBased. In this video, we're going to go into an in-depth presentation of Windows 11 23H2 features, features that we know about so far and that are pretty much confirmed to be a part of Windows 11 23H2. For those of you who don't know, Windows 11 23H2 is supposed to be released somewhere in September, October this year, and it will contain a lot of improvements, a lot of new changes inside the Windows operating system. In this video, I'm going to try to cover everything that there is to the Windows 11 23 H2 version. If you enjoy videos like these on this channel, please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to the TechBase channel. It helps me out a lot. So let's begin with the video. For those of you wondering how am I able to test features for Windows 11 23H2 as it is not officially released, well, I'm on the latest build from the dev channel of the Windows Insider program, which is basically a testing build that Microsoft released publicly for users to test out features that are in the early development process. So let's begin with all the new features. First of all, we have a complete new file explorer interface. I'm going to open up file explorer and you'll notice certain new things inside the file explorer. First of all, we have a new home page inside the file explorer with larger fonts, larger icons, rounded corners and new animations. I think this is looking pretty good. Also, we have a new address bar in the file explorer, which looks very nice in my opinion. Yet again, with new animations, rounded corners, new buttons and also a new and improved search box for the file explorer. We are also getting the new details pane. So if I were to select a file, we have a new details pane that you can enable from the top right in the file explorer, which will show you a preview of that certain file. You have the option to share it and also the quick link to the property section of that certain file. Microsoft is also adding a new section, which is called gallery. And this section will basically gather photos from your operating system and you'll be able to select certain things such as where do you want Windows to select photos from and so on. And you also have a chronological sidebar here where you can select certain periods of time where you want to see photos from. You also have a button here which says collection and you have a few options, show all, pictures, downloads, pictures. You have a few default locations that you can select the gallery section to gather photos from or you can click on manage collection and here you can add certain custom locations where you would want gallery to get the photos inside the section from. Overall, I think this is looking pretty good, even in full screen. You get these nice rounded corner cards, which look pretty nice. Also inside the home section of the file explorer, you'll be able to notice certain new notifications that you can receive. For example, this is one of them. Important files should be regularly backed up. You can click on get started or learn more. If you click on get started, it'll be of course opened up inside the Microsoft OneDrive app. Also a new interesting thing that was added and improved inside the file explorer is the file explorer tab tear out or merge basically you will be able to select out a tab and drag it outside of his own window and create a new separate window and also you can get a tab from another window and add it to the existing window and it will be pinned in or merged into that window that you got it from and i think this is also pretty nice the tabs in the file explorer now have pretty much all the functionalities you need and these are some great improvements for those of you who will be connected with an azure active Directory account inside the home page of the file explorer you will also get a new recommended files area which will basically recommend files from the cloud to you and um, inside the details pane you'll also get additional information about certain files that are accessed via the cloud talking about file explorer Microsoft is also adding some improvements to the snap layouts the snap layouts is basically the menu that appears when you hover over the maximize button inside the file explorer and here you can have the option to quickly snap your window window to certain positions and uh, portions of the screen and also in addition to that Microsoft is also adding some badging basically when you hover over a certain snap you'll get this hover that will give you more information and along with that it will also detect applications that you currently have opened up on your system and you will be able to use those apps to snap around them or besides them I think that is also really nice so for example if I were to open another app for example the calculator app and I go here you be able to see that I have only the calculator or the calculator and OBS which is the software that I use to record right now and I think these are some nice improvements moving on to other things we have a new Windows AI assistant inside Windows 11 that will be available inside Windows 11 23 h2 and that is called Windows Copilot Windows Copilot will appear as a icon in the taskbar and if you right click on the taskbar and then click on taskbar settings you will be able to turn it on or off from taskbar items 
by switching this slider and it will appear or disappear depending on the option you choose. And if you click on it and open it, you will be greeted by Windows Copilot. As you can see, everything that is currently opened will move to the side to get space for the Windows Copilot. And basically, the Windows Copilot so far is at a very early stage of development, but it will basically allow you to ask questions or do simple tasks inside the Windows 11 operating system. For example, I can type in here, take a screenshot, press enter, and in a few seconds you'll notice that the snipping tool app inside Windows 11 will be opened up and it will allow us to take a screenshot. Of course, so far the Windows Copilot AI Assistant is pretty slow and it is pretty buggy because as I've said, it is at a very early stage of development. But in the near future, Microsoft stated that Windows Copilot will be able to do even more complex tasks and also will have a lot of improvements design wise because for example right now because it is based on Microsoft Edge and the Bing search engine as you all know if you right click on this you can click on inspect and basically you can have a free way to change certain things in here and I think that is a thing that Microsoft will resolve in the future so those things being said AI is coming to Windows 11 and hopefully is for the better it will improve productivity and efficiency in using the Windows 11 operating system altogether moving on to other things, we are getting the never combine or ungroup taskbar and label apps or icons in the taskbar. This was a highly requested feature by users and we are finally getting it. As you can see right now, I have selected the never combine taskbar icons, but to see more options about that, you can right click on the taskbar and then click on taskbar settings, scroll down a bit and then go to taskbar behaviors. And here down below, you'll notice some new options, combine taskbar buttons and hide labels. I selected never, but you also have always and when taskbar is full and also show labels on taskbar app icons. Basically, this will show labels labels on all taskbar app icons even if they are not currently opened and combine taskbar buttons and high labels on other taskbars again you also have always when taskbar is full and never and i think this is referring to taskbars on other monitors so far i think this feature is pretty well implemented i didn't have any issues with it and i love it because in previous versions of windows i was using it daily if you right click on the taskbar and then go to taskbar settings you'll notice a new option search where you have have options to select the way search appears on the taskbar. This is not something new, hide search only, search icon and label and search box. But in addition to that, you have a new option, open search on hover when available. You can turn this on or off. And if you hover over the search highlights, when you have this on, search will be opened up without clicking only by hovering on it. Of course, this can be easily turned off if you don't like it. Inside the Windows operating system, also related to the taskbar, we have a new option to hide date and time inside the taskbar in the right side. All you have to do is right click on the date and time or clock, click on adjust date and time. And here you have an option, show time and date in the system tray. Turn this off to hide your time and date information on the taskbar. If you turn this off, you will be able to see that the time and date options information will be turned off from the taskbar. And for those of you who like like minimalism, I think this is looking pretty great. But for me, I like to have the time and date on the taskbar. Now we will be moving on to the settings app because the settings app has a lot of improvements in Windows 11 23H2. So if I open the search box and type in here settings and open the settings app, or even easier, I use the Windows plus I keyboard combination, the new settings app will be opened up. And as you can see here, first of all, we have a completely new homepage for settings with cards that have rounded corners. Basically, these cards inside the settings app contain the most used and recommended settings. We have here, first of all, recommended settings. We have information about cloud storage. We have an option to add certain recovery options to our Microsoft account, Bluetooth devices, Microsoft 365 subscription management, and personalize your device. I think this new homepage looks very, very nice, and you can easily have access to useful information or options from your operating system. You can very fast change the color mode inside the system, change backgrounds, or go into date and time taskbar display options. For example, just click on display, and select your display setting. I think this is looking very good and it matches the Windows 11 experience better. Also in the settings app, we have new redesigned dialogues for certain simple tasks. For example, activation, troubleshooting, resetting your PC and so on. They are redesigned to match the Windows 11 experience. Also in the settings app, we have a new section which is called dynamic lighting and basically we can customize our RGB devices and we have a lot of options here. We can manage all dynamic lighting devices. You can use dynamic lighting on my devices, 
compatible apps in the foreground, always control lighting, background, light control, and you have here the option to customize this. Brightness, you can change the brightness of your lights, effects, and you also have certain light effects that you can add from here. I think this is pretty well, and this can easily work as a simpler and more intuitive version of a more complex third-party app or your keyboard or mouse inside the settings app. We are also getting the options to create a new dev drive and see all the options for that. And we can also create a virtual hard disk, VHD, or create a dev drive. And a dev drive is basically a drive that will have optimized performance for developer scenarios. And this is a very good addition for developers that want to test out certain things and all the dialogues and stuff are matching the Windows 11 experience as you can see. I'm not going to go in depth with creating a VHD or a dev drive but if you're interested in this and you are a developer Windows 11 23H2 will be the version for you. The settings app is also coming with a lot of network and internet section improvements for example you'll be able to view the Wi-Fi security key from a known network and you'll have that option inside your network connection. You can click on view and you'll be able to see the password for that if somehow you lost it or forgot it and also more options to quickly access adapter options and so on i think this is great also related to the settings section to be more exact quick settings inside the windows 11 operating system we are also getting a new volume mixer and if you go in near the volume slider and then click on this you'll see the new volume mixer from windows 11 which will have an output device spatial sound settings and the volume mixer where you can have the option to customize the volume for the certain apps individually and I think that is nice. You also have a button here for more mixer settings which will open up the settings app and in addition to that you also have more volume settings which will as well open the sound settings inside the settings app. I think this is a nice addition and finally we can have a default volume mixer inside the Windows 11 operating system and we no longer need to install a third-party app. Now we're moving on to a different section of the Windows operating system. We will be getting native support for RAR, 7-zip, TAR, TARGZ and so on inside the Windows 11 operating system so you will be able to quickly extract files that have those formats for example as you can see I have here an archive that has the .rar extension and it is detected by the Windows 11 file explorer I think that is pretty good but of course this is limited right now because Windows will only allow you to extract those files will not allow you to compress into those certain formats and right now inside the Windows of right now inside the Windows 11 operating system you only have the option to compress to zip files and no other options so it's a good beginning and it's really nice that Microsoft has finally implemented this after a lot of years. Now we will talk about certain new apps inside Windows 11 and also improvements to existing apps. We have the new Windows Backup app in Windows 11 and this is a completely redesigned app that will match the Windows 11 experience. As you can see here, it has nice rounded corners and dark mode and it also has an integration with the Windows 11 OOB installation section where you can simply access these backups that are connected to your Microsoft account and from there you can back up your computer or access a previous backup. I think that is really nice. You also have settings for that, credentials, and basically you can very easily select which options, settings, apps, folders, and so on you want to be backed up to your OneDrive account, of course, in the limit of your storage capacity. Developers are also getting a new app which is called Dev Home. This is also an early preview but this will allow you to monitor your github issues and pull requests and so on it has an integration with github of course using this you can do end-to-end -end setup use a configuration file close repositories install applications add a dip drive which is related to the settings section i think that is good if you're a developer you can get ready to code in minutes using the new dev home app we're also getting the new paint app with dark mode which is not something that is necessarily tied to windows 11 23 h2 but we will be able to see it inside Windows 11 23H2 most likely. And this is a redesigned paint app, which has dark mode and also some redesigned image property sections that match the Windows 11 experience and have the dark mode. We also have something new, more options to zoom inside paint. We have fit to window. We have the percentage that we want to select the zoom with, and we also have a slider. I think those are some nice additions to the paint app in Windows 11. The Microsoft Store is also getting an AI integration with the new AI hub section. And here you will be able to see showcased apps 
that use AI. For example, right now, Luminar Neo is an app that you can do advanced photo editing with. And I think this new section is pretty promising because here you'll be able to try out certain AI apps directly from the Microsoft Store. Microsoft has also improved the emojis inside the operating system. We're getting the new emoji 15.0 and also the new improved and color for emojis. I think that is also really nice. Microsoft is also working on improving notifications. So basically Microsoft will also allow you to turn off certain notifications that come from certain apps that Windows will see you are not usually interacting with and it will allow you to deactivate notifications from those apps very quickly and very easily. I think this is also a nice addition. We also have improvements for the widget section, a new UI that looks pretty nice, different variants that are being tested to this. We also have a new add widgets section or menu that is redesigned and I think it's looking pretty nice. Of course, this is also something new in Windows and um, in my opinion, it looks pretty good compared to the previous add widgets menu that was looking pretty old and it was not really matching the Windows 11 experience. Microsoft is also adding a lot of improvements for the voice access and also live captions apps that are pretty useful for a lot of people that use Windows and basically these apps have a lot of languages added, a lot of English dialects added and design wise they have improvements that will allow users and people to use these two apps very easily. I'm not going to go in depth with them but if you're using them and if you find them useful you'll be able to see those new improvements. Overall, in the Windows operating system, Microsoft has worked on improving little things, little design things that were pretty old and not very good looking. As an example that I could give you, the lock screen network sidebar was also changed inside Windows 11 to match the Windows 11 experience. And as I've said, a lot of dialogues, a lot of different sections of Windows were updated to match the Windows 11 experience. And in my opinion, Windows 11 is shaping up to be a complete operating system. Of course, it has its issues, but in my opinion, that's what makes Windows great because you can customize it, you can play with it, you can do a lot of stuff, and you basically have pretty much no limits to it. So this was the video in which I showcased the new Windows 11 23H2 features. If you want to learn more information about all these features, you can check out the article below in the video's description where you also have in-depth information about things that we've talked about in this video. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to the TechBase channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. I was Emmanuel from TechBase. Until next time, have a nice day.